Hey Yard Nerds! Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays! So, today is December 26th. This will probably go live December 27th. And I wanted to share some of the artsy Christmas presents I got with you guys. I received this year with you guys. Does that make sense? I want to share with you guys what I got for Christmas, okay? So, this wasn't like a huge year for art supplies, but I also didn't ask for a lot of art supplies. So I was really surpre surprised and impressed. My brain was like, I was really suppressed. No, I was really surprised and impressed by how many art supplies I actually received this Christmas. There is something in here that is pretty dang rare, but it'll surprise you because it is not what you think. So let me show you guys what I got for Christmas. So most of these were actually on my Amazon wish list and Joseph curated them and then sent a list to my mom to help her know what I don't actually already own. But a couple of these, my husband took the initiative and went out stalking for them. So let's actually start with the stalked presents. So a couple years ago, I was at Hands-On Creativity and I was talking to the Strathmore rep and I was lamenting the fact that they don't make tone watercolor papers. And he brought up that they used to make Neptune and they no longer do because people don't buy it. And Joseph hunted this down on eBay. He had an eBay search for new old stock. And what that means is it's an older product, but it was never, no one ever used it. So it might have been sitting in a store's back room or some artist like myself might have been hoarding it for 10 years, you know? Um, but it's new old stock, so it's never been used. And it's a small pad of Strathmore Neptune. And this was the first time in two years anything had pinged that search. So either people are hoarding Neptune and really love it or it's just about to disappear. So Joseph bought me the last possible intact remaining pad of Neptune. And I'm both excited and kind of scared. So I'm excited because it comes in several different colors. They're all very usable base tints. And for the kind of pastel art I like to do, those could be perfect. I'm afraid that I might fall in love with it and then womp womp, oh well, not available ever again. I'm also concerned because while Strathmore does make cotton rag papers, this one ain't it. And I generally don't like uh, Strathmore's cellulose based watercolor papers. They usually rate pretty low for me. Joseph knew that at the time. He's 100% not offended. In fact, he's in the room right now. He's not offended at all that I'm pointing that out. I said it when I was talking to the Strathmore rep that, you know, Maybe it would have done better if it was a cotton rag paper. I, I don't know there. But um, I'm actually really excited to try it. I'm going to try to use everything I've ever learned about dealing with Strathmore paper to bring out the best in this Neptune paper. And I hope I don't fall in love because it'll be real sad to fall in love with it and never ever be able to use it again. I don't know. Maybe that would be enough to convince me and like a bunch of other artists to convince Strathmore to maybe do like, I don't know, a 40th anniversary of Neptune or something. So this isn't actually that old. This is some of their newer branding, but they quit distributing Neptune in the US right before I got into watercolor. So I actually never had a chance to buy this when it was a, a new, new product. In that same lot, he also got a pad of unused Canton watercolor paper. This has a really weird texture. It's like a laid linen finish, which I, I, I know some people like that for watercolor paper. I don't. Um, and I think it's somewhere between Canton XL and Canton Montball. I use both. I like both. Uh, my only complaint is the laid linen finish. And when Joseph wrapped these, he addressed these two to Natto Soup Studio. So these were purchased with the intention of me actually talking about them critically. Now, something that was not purchased necessarily with the intention of me talking about it critically, but I'm sure she knows I will, is my mom got me the 24 color Paul Rubens set in pink. 
and this one was on my Amazon wish list for a while. I have a few friends on my Discord server who speak highly of Paul Rubens. When I tried the Paul Rubens half pans, I, I personally didn't really like them that much, but I've heard that the tubes are much better than the half pans and a lot of people really like them. So I'm interested in giving them a second try. I'm excited to give them a second try. The set is super big. This is gonna be its own video. Um, if it's the set I think it is, it also comes with um, a Magello style palette that you can put your paints in, which is great because it means I'm not using an, Alto an Altoids tin as my palette. So I look forward to exploring this and maybe sharing what I found out with you guys. So another arty gift was a Bowerbird palette. And I've had my eyes on these for a while. Um, I follow, or I used to follow Bowerbird on Instagram, and I used to follow their blog a long time ago. And these are, they used to be handmade wooden palettes, and they used to be made in small batches. I'd found this on Amazon and added, to, added it to my cart, because sometimes small vendors do have Amazon shop listings. Oh, there we go. Uh, but I think they might have changed their operations from being bespoke and handmade. So generally what's neat about these is they're made from a solid piece of wood and you put the paint right in the wells. I guess if you were really bothered by that, you could line it with like a little piece of like aluminum foil. I act that that doesn't bother me. What bothers me though, is there's a piece of like melamine for the mixing surface and you would remove this protective plastic film. And over time, the melamine has bowed. So mom and I were talking about peeling the melamine, removing the adhesive and using Gorilla Glue to stick it down good. How many does this hold? I think it's a 24 well palette. Anyway, the wood's beautiful. And I like that other than this bowing here, it has like a magnetic clasp. It has a really small profile. So it's something that you, you can use a lot of paint or you have a lot of paint on on the ready like your k-pop but it doesn't take up your whole desk it also comes with a nice drawstring bag i've had my eye on this for a while and then the final art related gift is sharing a house with the never-ending man and it's about a guy who worked at studio ghibli and he kind of he was kind of like their american if you know what i mean and he kind of just writes about his experiences. And I actually went to a lot of effort not to spoil this book for myself. I, I tend to read anything that comes out in English about Studio Ghibli or Studio Panak, and I own all the art books. So this is definitely something that I have been looking forward to, and I was going to pre-order it, and I'm glad I didn't because it meant I got to get it for Christmas. So it's not the biggest art supply haul for Christmas, but I also didn't ask for a lot of art supplies. So I'm really impressed. I'm honestly, this is really, really cool. And I was really excited when I opened it. But the thing I was the most impressed by is the Neptune pad because I know Joseph had to like track this down to find it. He had to put some time and effort into getting a pad of watercolor paper for me because they don't make it anymore. And I think it's really cool that I get to try out something that, you know, I'm sure a lot of the older artists here on YouTube, a lot of the older artists watching this, they y'all have used this. You have opinions about it. Um, I want to hear your opinions, but not until I've had a chance to use it myself because I kind of want to form my own opinions. Um, like this is this is probably something you're familiar with, and you probably know why Strathmore discontinued it. But this to me is cool because I started watercolor after they discontinued this. It's still in good shape. It's not like all ratty and all beaten up, and it means I get to kind of. I guess play around with art supply history in a small way and um they kind of excite like it kind of whets an appetite for me to start like cruising ebay for more new old stock the thing that's always kind of kept me from doing that is knockoff art supplies are a thing and i think I'm aware that I'm not always as savvy as I could be when it comes to eBay. Like I'll go on Wish. I know what I'm looking at on Wish and I'll go on AliExpress. I know what I'm looking at on both of those. Zulily's gotten me a couple times. I've been, I've been had by Zulily a couple times, but sometimes they send good stuff too. But eBay, eBay, I'm a little afraid of, but this kind of makes me want to 
do some deep dives on eBay and see what kind of awesome finds I can actually find. Not that I need more art supplies, but it's cheaper than paying full price. All right, so I hope you guys had a very Merry Christmas full of family and tasty food, if, if safe, if reasonable, if within, you know, safety of your area because different regions have different lockdown restrictions, etc. I'm not encouraging anybody to break those, um, so please don't take it like that. But I hope you guys did have as merry and happy a holiday as you could, full of tasty food, people who love you, whether near or far, and arty stuff. So um, I will see you guys in 2021. I wish you guys a merry rest of your Christmas holiday because it does go on until January 6th and a very happy new year. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.